welcome to Combinations, the podcast from North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare NHS Trust. For this topic, we're actually returning to something that we first covered in the podcast a couple of years ago, um, and that is the topic of freedom to speak up, and in particular, the role of freedom to speak up champions. Uh, We're recording this right at the start of October 22, um, which is the start of Freedom to Speak Up Month. And so we thought we would uh, mark the occasion with a conversation with some of our champions, old and new, um, and also uh, tell everybody about a little initiative we've got this uh, this, month. month which is wear green wednesday and uh, even though you can't see this on a podcast i'm here with a group of people and we're all wearing green including rob who claims he's wearing green but says it's actually his boxer shorts but we haven't (laughs) we haven't got him to prove that anyway if i could just ask everybody around thing just to to start off if you could just introduce yourself uh, with your name and the role you play and which part of the uh, organization you're a freedom to speak up champion in uh, morning, and morning to the listeners. I'm very glad to be here for the, my first time to be on a podcast. My name is Charles Ranga. Uh, I'm on Ward 7, Harplands Hospital, and I'm a staff nurse on Band 5. I've worked for the Trust now going for four years, and that's uh, briefly, that's my, my introduction. Hi, I'm Rob Silito. I'm the Reduce and Restrictive Practice Lead for the Trust. Uh, my Freedom to Speak Up area mainly is inpatient wards, working with staff on the inpatient areas, but also through the training that I provide with safety interventions training. Hi everyone, my name's Karina Bentley. I'm the Trust Clinical Audit Manager, obviously based in corporate services, but in common with most of the champions, accessible to anyone who, who wants to contact me. Hi, my name's Rachel Machin. I am a healthcare support worker um, working at Moorcroft Medical Centre. I am relatively new to the Freedom to Speak Up role. Hi, I'm Veronica Emlyn. I'm patient experience facilitator and also oversee our volunteers at the Trust. And uh, yeah, um, because of that position, I can work with service users, but also staff as well. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. So um, so we've got a, a, good, a good range here. Uh, we've got some people who've been with the Trust a little while, some people who've been with the Trust uh, medium time, some people who've been with the Trust since uh, the year dot. Uh, we've got a good combination of corporate and, and frontline. And also in frontline, we've also got both, uh, both our, acute, uh, our acute wards here and particularly primary care. And you can't get more frontline than primary care, can you? Yeah. Um, so... Um, Obviously, the, the audience for this podcast is, is um, uh, sometimes people uh, will be immersed in the NHS and everything it does and know every acronym and everything else. But occasionally what we also get is people who are just interested in what the NHS is doing, but know nothing about it. So um, we all have acronyms, you know, um, FTSU and all that sort of stuff. So just right starting, who would just like to say, if somebody says, what exactly is freedom to speak up? Why have we even got it? I'll take that one, I suppose. Um, so freedom to speak up was born from the Francis inquiry from Mid Staffordshire in 2013. It was one of the recommendations that he made to make the the NHS more open and transparent uh, for staff to feel enabled and empowered to come forward and speak up um, without any consequences from that. And to support that, we've got obviously the the, the Guardian, which is Marie Barley. And then following that, it was decided that we, to get out there, to get to more staff we had some champions because obviously people feel more comfortable going to certain people um, so that's why we've got I think it's 20 champions now across the whole trust so we do catch from a lot of the staff across every area of the trust uh, so that's what Freedom to Speak, us, speak Up is it's the enable staff to come to us to raise their concerns that they might have around patient safety around their own safety uh, anything around bullying or anything that's happening on the wards or in, in their services or areas that they work, and that we can help them and support them by taking things forward. Great, thanks, Rob. Um, and and I know that the, in putting in, in place that infrastructure, that infrastructure where not only do we have a freedom to speak up guardian you know, at the centre, but by having this role of champions, which I, as I understand it, every director in the trust has got a champion, and we've also got our different, we've got our different diversity and inclusion groups, haven't we? And each yeah. of those have got a champion as well. Um, I think that's one of the strongest infrastructures in the country. So it is something yeah. that that you should collectively be very proud of because it's it's uh, it's one of the jewels in our crown. Yeah, I um, think with the diversity, I think. The diverse in regards to the occupations, obviously the, the, the people that are working with Freedom to Speak Up, 
it captures every single area of the trust and that's what we are proud of that we have got people from every background working in different jobs different roles that enables people to actually come and speak to us as people that's what we are we're people that you can speak to hopefully people that you would like to speak to um, because I've got a quote from Francis, uh, Sir Francis saying, those who speak up are to be celebrated. They are a valuable part of any organisation. Valued and engaged staff provide excellent care to their patients. And that's what we're here for. We're here for patients to be able to support the staff, to, to look after patients in the best of their ability. And having that diversity across the trust is really important. Brilliant. OK, so obviously, um, so that's a theory and that's where it came from and, and that's the structure and all of that. But of course, you know, as we all know, in the NHS, you can have lots of initiatives and they have lots of national standards and you can have lots of things. But ultimately, it requires human beings to decide, you know what, um, I'm quite interested in doing that. I'll, 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 I'll step up around there on speaking up. So um, who'd like to say, you know, this is all a voluntary role. Um, it's a very good role. It's a very valued role. Um, but it required people to step up to the plate and, and say, you know, I'll do that. So who'd like to explain why they thought it, they, they'd, they'd like to be a Freedom Speak Up champion? I'll, I'll say for me, because I wasn't quite sure whether it was something for me or not. But I'm aware I'm, I'm here to give and encourage patients and carers to have a voice. But if I'm not supporting staff and colleagues in a similar way, then what is what am I doing really? And Freedom to Speak Up Champions seemed a way into that to be able to offer support as well as personally in a previous trust being on the receiving end of um, some experiences I wouldn't want to repeat or have staff in our organisation have repeated. But following due process didn't actually resolve anything. And I feel really strongly that this is a way forward to trying to resolve I know we don't always get the answers we want, but somehow about understanding why we get the answers we get. So that was where my, my passion and care for it came from, both on both sides. I can't encourage right. service users to speak up if I'm not actually supporting staff to speak up as well. Yeah, to me, mainly, basically mainly it is all about to ensure uh, people have got a voice. Uh, They've got a voice, they're being listened, and also get feedback. Uh, to be honest, being that I come, I come from the diversity background, like I'm an I'm a African ethnic, I, we, we've got that uh, a culture of saying like uh, anyone who's your leader or anyone who's your boss is not, you don't, it's not answerable. So despite you've got a grievance or you've got a problem, if it comes to you, we, 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 this is a common thing, like we tend to keep quiet, we tend to shy away, and yet we shouldn't be like that. So uh, I found it like a, if I can support my fellow colleagues who feel they can't speak, I could be like a voice for them or help them to touch on them or show them like a signpost showing them and please if you feel you're being hurt or you're not listened to can i give you support can i help you or you want me to show you direction or if they accept me i can escalate their problem or to the where it has to be gone to so that's briefly the way that's the way i could that inspired me to join into to support people who can't speak up? For me, um, I've been in a previous role where we we didn't have access to freedom to speak up. And um, so when I then transferred to the trust and we did have access to freedom to speak up, I've been in a position before where freedom to, if there was somebody for me to speak yeah. up to, I would have done, um, but like say we didn't have access to it then so that's what drew me to freedom to speak up that actually you, you can talk to people you can make your problems known and hopefully have a positive outcome um so that's what that's why i did freedom to speak up that was the the draw for me very little people know about it but they come to know it later on when they have started to work so there's, to, there's that element where we could find to break the fear 
and the negativity. So many staff have got some grievances there, but they come to know about Speak Up maybe later. But I wish if they could be introduced in the induction time when uh, somebody is getting, uh, somebody is starting a, a job. We could champion on what we call promote open culture yes. within the senior executive or well, the trust and also to create that confidentiality from the beginning mm -hmm. yeah. when somebody starts a job. Yeah. So it could be, we could make a part of a package yeah. of who we are, yeah. the freedom speak up and what's their role. So that could uh, promote that open culture within yeah. the trust. So I think that is a really good point that Charles has made, that at the point of recruitment, if it is discussed, then that would give um, people the, the confidence to speak up before it does get to a potential crisis point. Um, and then, you know, they were aware of who the guardians are, the champions, and then they could speak up. And, and interesting, you were saying about recruitment there. Okay, sometimes you can have people who come to join the NHS who've worked in worked in a different environment, you know, where that really isn't encouraged, and that and it could be sometimes that, that part of the actual recruitment process is, yeah, come and join the NHS, come and join combined healthcare, um, because that's what we do here. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter, you know, particularly that we're providing healthcare or we're supporting people with mental health. Is if you want to come to work and you want to work in an environment where if you've got a concern, okay. You can speak about it. Come and work mm -hmm. combined, because that's what we do here. And it's almost part of the recruitment package of why would I get out of bed and go to work in that organisation rather than, you know, going and selling milkshakes. Not only that you can speak about it, but you will be listened to mm -hmm. and you will be heard. Yeah. Because, you know, I think for a lot of people, if they say, well, I can speak up, but I don't think anybody will really listen or anybody will take much notice. Well, no, we're more, we not just freedom to speak up, but also be listened to and be heard and potentially make a positive change. I think the other thing about having that conversation mm -hmm. early when people come in for recruitment is they're a pair of fresh eyes. Yeah. Yes. So what you can have is a culture where you've got a lot of people on the same ward or in the same team mm -hmm. and things become, this is just how we do things. Yeah. Whereas if you get somebody who comes yeah. into that team, then they might see something and think, well, hang on, that doesn't feel right. And, and so that's a really good opportunity yeah. for people. Yes, yeah, definitely. And actually, based on that, because we're only just reintroducing volunteers, when we, I was recruiting for that was actually part of their induction, that I did do something with them, a conversation with them about freedom to speak up, because they were that fresh pair of eyes going on to whatever area they were going. And also that sense of you may be a volunteer, but you're part of us and you have a right yourselves to say something, but also it's okay to raise concerns about things you may see or good stuff that you see. It's good to feed back. Some of, us have been, some of you have been here for a little while, haven't you, been Freedom Speak Up champions. Um, has it worked? I think, I, I think it has worked. I think it, it gives that opportunity for people to speak to. Like Charles has already said, that it might not feel like you could, you could go to your manager, your leader, your, your, your line manager, and say, this is the problem that I'm facing. It gives you that extra avenue that you can go down, that you don't have to go and speak to your manager. We'll always signpost to say, have you spoken to your manager to start with? And if you don't feel comfortable and able to speak to them, we can support in that way. And I think it has helped. Um, I know that speaking to the Guardian, it, we, we've got that advice from her as well if we need to, uh, but not everybody wants to speak to a certain person or another person that, that you feel might be connected to it. So having that opportunity to have the, the vast array of staff that have got the experience of working as an inpatient or working in corporate, working with service users, working in, in, in primary health, primary care, it gives the opportunity for you actually to experience and speak to people with different knowledge. And So yeah, I think it really does work. Now Rachel, I understand you are one of the newest members of the Freedom Speak Up Champion family, if you like, and I understand you joined just as Covid was hitting. That's right. And, yes. and, and the really interesting thing here is, you know, two years ago, you know, well it was almost two years ago Covid hit, wasn't it? But we, we, it, this was started in, in a different world. Where, where we didn't have COVID. And also, Karina, of course, we're, we're sitting in a situation where, for lots of really, really good positive reasons, agile working, flexible working, everything else, we don't, as individuals and as teams, actually physically get together 
as often as we do. So there, there aren't those opportunities for that sort of bumping to each other in the corridor or I know that person because, I, you know, I trust them because I see them, you know, I see them getting a sandwich or something like that. So it'd be really interesting just to hear, how do you see the role evolving and how do we make it work in this sort of new world where we are, we are ourselves more, uh, more dispersed um, than before? Certainly from a corporate perspective, as somebody who's now working from home full time, and I know a lot of my corporate colleagues are in the same position, I don't think there's an easy answer to that. I think that's something we're going to be working through over the coming months. It's something I'm particularly interested in. How do we promote that to people? Part of the work we're doing at the moment, going out and meeting teams as part of Freedom to Speak Up and getting our faces out there, I think is important. But also, if you yourself are in a position where you're you're on your own in your bedroom or in your sort of home office and something happens which you don't feel comfortable with how do you have the confidence then to approach a champion when it's not the same as just walking down the corridor and running into them so I think that's something I'm I'm quite interested to see how we develop that over the coming months really and how we how we reach out to people and say we're here um and and enable them to do that I guess I've never actually had a, an area where I've had to escalate it. I've had them conversations numerous times with people and they just want to be listened to yeah. and heard. They want to have that noise added to. So we've heard a concern about this, we've heard a concern about this, we've heard another concern about this. Okay then, well, rather than it being a confidential by one per- well, an escalation by one person, it could be escalated by me. Well, actually, I've heard a couple of people say this about a service or an area or a ward or a person potentially yeah. so then I can say right okay then enough's enough I suppose I can then say right okay then I need to speak to Marie and it won't be that mm-hmm. such and such said this such and such said that it's yeah. Rob Silito as the Freedom to Speak Up champion saying I've heard this noise I've heard what's been going on and I can then escalate it and I think that's what our role yeah. is mm-hmm. we are the sounding board as, as Karina said the ears and the eyes of the trust to be able, and the advocates for freedom to speak up. And I suppose we can then potentially say, right, okay, then that to me, I'm pointing to an, an empty chair. <laughs> that to me, I'm pretending to somebody Very there, gestalt. That to me is a concern. I think you need to speak to Marie. Yeah. And, and interesting, I think that's going back also to what you were saying at the start there, Charles, wasn't it? it is, is, it's about that culture. It's yeah, about the yes, culture yeah. of saying, yeah. look, your voice matters. Yeah. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a grievance. Yeah. And, and to be honest, you, you sometimes take this on trust that that that, that speak speak to the champion. Mm-hmm. They talk to each other. They talk to Marie. It doesn't necessarily need to go all the way up and then an escalation down. It helps if it does, yeah. uh, in in some instances. But sometimes it's just no, no, no. You've got a voice and you will be heard. And we've got a mechanism for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. One of the trainings that's, that's offered yeah. is freedom to listen up or listen yeah. up training, yeah. and yeah. that is for managers and people who lead other people. Yeah. To, because ideally we want managers to be open, you know, yeah. yes, it's great that we, we're champions and people can come to us, people can come to Marie, mm-hmm. but actually we'd love it if people didn't have to come to yeah. us because they felt confident to go to their managers and their managers felt confident to take their concerns yeah. forward. So there's, there's that alongside mm-hmm. it as well. And I think with that, as a champion, I don't necessarily need to know the outcome, but the person who's raised the issue does need to know yeah, the outcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so there's something there for me about um, that that person knowing. I don't necessarily need to know if I know they've been supported. And actually, in one instance, that person came back and told me what the resolution had been. But I didn't need to know that as long as I knew they'd been heard. Yeah. And I, I think that's probably what we're all about, really, mm-hmm. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What yeah. we want are our colleagues to be heard. And if they raise something, that actually they get something back. Uh, they know what happened. Because quite often we hear, don't we, well, I don't know what's happened about this. Well, actually, people need to know. We don't necessarily need to know. Mm. That's a really important do. point as well, isn't it? So, so it's almost, it's not like sort of there is a layer and every layer has to know what happens. It's no. almost like you're an enabler in the system yeah. to, to sort of basically, basically open up yeah. the system and, and channel. Yeah. So there's a channel open yeah. that, that, that to go through. That's a really, really it interesting is, it's, point. It's opening well. that channel for that person that yeah. they couldn't readily open themselves. And we're, I yeah. wouldn't say we're like superheroes no. and we can do whatever we want to, <laughs> no. but we have got that ability to speak to other people. Yeah. We meet regularly. 
to discuss things, yeah. not com uh, what's happening within the trust, but we meet to discuss things and if there's any intelligence or noise that we hear, and we can openly talk about it. Yeah. And, it and, and I suppose we have got that ability to go to the top, potentially, mm -hmm. through yeah. Marie as the yeah. free to speak up guardian. So we're hearing that we, um, we have, a, we have a, a, a culture and a statement of intent that has been there from the start. We're hearing that it, we have a more extensive network that we go beyond yeah. what is merely the national directive. We have an, we have an appreciation that it's, it, it's not just about grievance, it's about culture, mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about a statement of intent. We need to be getting better mm -hmm. at saying that right at the start and making clear as people come into the organisation, this is just part of the way we do things here at Combined. Yeah. It's, it's not just, and so it's not just a, um, we'll tell you about that if you need to know about it later on down the line. So we've got some work to do there, do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We're, hear we're hearing that it's um, that you, you see your role not necessarily as needing to know everything that happens, but to make the overall system yeah. work, and, and we're content with that. Yeah, each individual little thing can sometimes have uh, an importance that the, yeah. the person saying it might not even realise. Yeah, yeah. We're hearing that um, it it has relevance not just at a corporate level, but of acute and in particular yeah. uh, with our primary care colleagues. Yes. Um, yeah. we're, we're hearing all of that. Um, and and we're hearing that, that that's a good message and a good celebration, if you like, as part of this role during to Freedom to Speak Up Month. Right, so, I, I mean, I started off this podcast by saying that we first, you know, raised this topic a couple of years ago when we've started, so here we are a couple of years later, and we're learning some things have worked, some things could be a bit better, some things are really good, some things are unique. So um, I think we almost should set ourselves to think that, right, OK, let, let's come back in a year's time at the, for, for Freedom to Speak Up Month 2023, where, I don't know, we'd be wearing green or red or blue or waving flags or whatever. We'd come back in again and say, do you know what? Um, I fed that up as part of that podcast. Um, yeah. I'm listening. What happened? Yeah. Would that be right? Yeah. 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 Well, listen, thank you ever so much for taking the trouble to take part in this conversation. Really, really appreciate it. And, uh, and for those of you <clears throat> who uh, are interested, um, you can find some stuff about Freedom to Speak Up. If you're a member of staff, um, you can look on our cat intranet. Um, we do also have some stuff on our, on our public website as well, particularly for volunteers and service users. Um, we can always, always send uh, a confidential email to is it ftsu at combined.nhs.uk yeah. 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 so anybody anybody uh, can send an email to them and um and, and and raise anything and of course we um any feedback that uh, you might have about this podcast the comms team are always there so um i think that's a really good way to finish if that's okay yeah. thank yeah. you very much thank you. um thank let's you. see you all you know same bat time same bat place this year yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. next year next year next year, <laughs> next year. <laughs> thanks very much thank you. Thank you.